Hello there, this is David Allen for Mac 20 Questions and Video Magical and I'm having a look at motion once again. And the last time I was doing a video about motion I was looking at the brush stroke. So let's have a look and see what we can do today with the Bezier curves. Beziers are quite easy to work with, it's kind of like a vector tool. So let's just start by putting a bit of a curve in there. You can use these handles to make the line go whichever way you want it to go to. Just click once and it makes a straight line. And then if you want to have a curve on the end of it, just click and drag with it. And then you can make that curve go whichever way you want it to go into. OK, so there we have a curve done there. We've got the uh, width of the line set. And we're not going to put a fill in there because we're not going to um, join the two ends together. So that's a bit better. We'll just press enter when we finish doing our line. So there's our line. We can start doing a few things with this uh, once we've got it. We can uh, move these points around like that if we want to. That's quite uh, an easy way to change line after you've made it. I can change the roundness of these with this thing down here in the uh, heads up display. And of course I can change the width of it. And blend mode, obviously you can do all the sorts of changing with that as well. That's only going to make any difference if you've got things underneath it. So I'll leave that for the moment. And uh, shape style. Well, I can put also shapes on this as well. Look, so I could put some dots on there. And obviously those dots, they will change depending upon uh, how you uh, change the width of it. Okay, so that's uh, styles we can add to it. Let's go for an urban style, graffiti marker. You can make a few changes on this one thing over here as well. So let's go to the shape. And we've got the outline here. We can change the width of it. We can change the spacing of that as well. We'll select that, change the shape style. We'll look for something that's calico cattail. Well, that's good. It does look a bit like a cat's tail, doesn't it? Well, there you go. We've got some animation happening now because I clicked on this uh, play frames and I've clicked on random start frame as well. So it's better without the random start frame. Oh gosh, all sorts of things happening with it there now. Now at some point in time what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to start looking at some other things in this here such as the uh, replicator. So let's click on that there. We've got some replication happening now. We can do some changes to that with this box here. You can squish it up or stretch it out and do all sorts of things there. You could use something like this here for making yourself some sort of nice uh, background that you could have for whatever else that you would have put on there and we can change this sort of fill of things that are happening here as well so say so if I change the scale of it there and you can even change what's happening to it randomly by clicking on generate so that you have different uh, random seed there if you don't like what's happening with it just click on it and uh, it'll change to something else we can change the angle of this too change the angle end we can even change the angle randomness. Let's go to the library. So what else can do this? Just make it a bit more interesting. We've got Atom 1 and Atom 2. Best thing to do is to have a look up here first of all and see what it's supposed to do when you before you put it in there. Autumn Aspen. That one could be quite nice. We'll uh, stick that in there, I think. Let's uh, put it in and see what happens. Drag it and drop it into here. OK, so we've got that there. It's working on the foreground. Let's drag this out and make it slightly different in shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop it a bit first of all, just so I can uh, make some changes to the size of it. A bit easier to do when it's not moving. And I think what I'll do is as well change the uh, blend mode on it as well. Multiply. Let's press play again. So let's get this now. Move that up to the top there. Okay, so now we've got it in the background there. Okay, so we go back to our group one, and what we do with that one there, we can change the way that works. So that's with overlay. And let's go for vivid light. So you can make all sorts of changes of this here and get uh, something that is going to be just exactly that you want. Using the difference one there to uh, that's just change all the colours of it. I suppose what we could do with this one here, this Autumn Aspen one, if we wanted to, we could add a replicator to that as well. Get all sorts of things happening now, haven't we? 
let's grab this end over here and uh, extend it let's drag this in here see what it's going to do okay so we've got uh, some stripes happening in there let's change the blend mode to darken we'll try another blend mode let's go for overlay it's all a bit 60s this isn't it and then we've got sharpness let's take the sharpness down so that's uh, something else just may put the replicator at the top there okay so uh, that's changed it again so there we go we've uh, had a bit of a play with the replicator which basically kind of uh, replicates uh, part of your design and sort of uh, makes it do a repeat and then we've put in a bezier curve and we've also added uh, a striped generator just to uh, see what that does to uh, make it a little bit different so that's another bit of motion let's have a look again at uh, other things we can do in motion in another video this is dave allen for video magical and mac 20 questions and bye bye now talk to you again soon So thanks for clicking on the like in YouTube there. So why don't you subscribe to Wizard Gold Max 20 Questions and every time I've got a new video out you're going to be the first to know about it. Bye bye now.